Hello, welcome to the video. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I planned my route for the Japanese Odyssey. Now, if you've not been watching uh, the channel over the last few weeks, um, you wouldn't know that I've just cycled the length of Japan. I took part in the Japanese Odyssey, which is a 1,500 mile bikepacking event through the country. Um, it's a free route event, uh, and basically we had to plan our own route uh, and cross a variety of checkpoints. So this is their website, um, and you can see um, all the information you need on there. Um, and they also provide a route uh, and then it's up to riders to um, connect all the dots essentially and finish the event in uh, in under 12 days um, which i managed to do uh, so i'm using Rabi gps this is my preferred um, you know software for, for mapping um, i've actually used it since 2013 when i first did the transcontinental race and it's the one i go to um, yeah, no, it just it works very well for me, uh, and I like the features. Um, and I'm going to show you how I put the route together. So, without further ado, here we go. Um, so, as you can see, the the race organisers provide the the sectors. There's a series of sectors and checkpoints. Um, you can see um, start down in Kagoshima in the south of the country, uh, and into sector one, um, which is quite a long one. And then there's various points which are just checkpoints, and then other sectors as well. So what I'm going to do is. Um, I'm going to plan or show you how I planned this first section across the first island. There's actually uh, there's a race manual on the website somewhere and in it they mandated that you need to use uh, a ferry to cross over here. Um, so the ferry goes, uh, there's a ferry port um, just up here somewhere. I think it must be this one here. Um, so uh, yeah, it makes a nice kind of um, short route to show you how I sort of planned everything. So the first thing I need to do is download these uh, route files. Um, you won't be able to get the checkpoints. However, you will get these these predetermined routes here. So for, for, for this video, there'll be three routes and one individual checkpoint um, plus the start point. So what I do is go into the three dots here, download KML file, export as KML instead of KMZ and hit OK. And that downloads into the um, into your, like your browser um, downloads. I've actually done a previous. I've done this uh, before just to make things easier, uh, and I've saved it on my desktop. And now we go straight across to Ride with GPS. Um, so this is the home page on Ride with GPS. Um, give you a few stats for the year. Apparently, I've burnt four hundred thousand calories um, and cycled ten and a half thousand miles um, in just under seven hundred and forty hours. Um, not sure exactly how. Uh, how accurate is it? it depends you know exactly what i upload um but anyway uh, on to the route so first thing we need to do uh we need to upload the files we've just downloaded so go to upload on the left hand side browse files um this is a desktop japanese odyssey kml open that up and uh save as a route and then it's just going to have a think about it and process it so essentially that is then going to add up um, add all those individual route se segments on as separate files so um, might just need to do a little bit of titling and stuff um, so hit done here and then go across to routes and you should see them all populated here so um, as you can see uh, that's the first one um, I'll just edit that oh no wrong one um, just rename that um, how do I do that there we go going to edit um, so that's sector one put Japan as well I mean you can label this however you want but this is just you, you'll see uh, in a minute it just makes things slightly clearer um, go back to my roots and um, where are we Japan's up to one. This should be two. Let's just have a look. See if it's done it in logical order. Um, yeah, so that's the. Uh, well, it's actually sector three if we look at the map because there, there's a checkpoint here. So this section here, um, I shall rename that. Just hit the little edit thing. Japan, sector three. Save that, um, and literally, I'm just labeling this just to make life easier in a second, uh, as you'll you'll see, and and then just check this one here. Um, this should be the final sector 
the fall of ferry yeah so the ferry's up here so this is uh, on the on the official map this section here um, which is s4 so sector 4 um, I'll just name that um, Japan sector 4 um, and save that so I've I've basically um, renamed the first um, the first well the three mandatory sections on this first little island here uh, and there's also the the point here that point won't come on the um, the map as such but I'll just add it in there um, as a point of interest in a second um, so those are all named let's go to the route planner and then start making this thing uh, let's start a new route and uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to I'm going to add those three uh, sections so as you can see import routes and rides here and you can see um, these are all the rest of the route we're, we're going to disregard those for now so I want sector one sector three and sector four I'm going to add those to my planner and then you can see on the left hand side they, those have kind of like popped in there um, and that gives you this nice kind of the, the dots and if you if you hang your your mouse over it you'll see it uh, shows up but before I get into planning all of that what I'm going to do is add some POIs so um, I'm going to add the start the ferry and also that second checkpoint and then once that structure is in place um, we can then start to kind of build the route so um, I'm going to go in here so this is where the event started um, we had to get the ferry across from the um, the main city and there's a little um, hotel up here so let's just compare it on here I mean there might be a slightly more accurate way to get the points in um, but uh, for the purposes I just kind of match it up and if you zoom in here you can see the little star on the start and that's just outside the hotel we started at which is here and I'm gonna just add a um, I'm just gonna add a a POI so point of interest so if I get the the, the marker here uh, with POI selected on the side if I just click here um, it brings up this POI box and what I'm going to do is you can you can basically have a generic one or you can put specific things like lodging you know parking food whatever we'll come on to that later um, but I like to use the um, the start one so um, actually no there's finish one uh, there's a start and a finish so, oh yeah segment start yeah so this start one here I'll put the um, put the name in start point um, you can add like details and stuff um, so basically the, the reason I do this is because once I'm riding I can use the app um, on my phone and then these these points kind of show up so um, if I go to the Rive GPS app on my phone I can then um, re refer to, to kind of what I'm doing as I go along. So I'll create something like this. Um, and you can see on my phone here that this is, uh, you know, showing the map. Um, so this is, this is kind of planning for now and also to help us later on during the ride. So that's the first checkpoint in there. Um, I also need to put that checkpoint two in. So it's just a point on the map that we need to pass through and that was where was it um let's google in i mean this like i said this isn't the most scientific way of doing this particular section i'm sure there might there's you know there's various ways to do it um but i'm not very scientific so uh, <laughs> so it's just north of isa on this road on the um uh, on this this um provincial border here um on this nice twisty mountain road so basically what I'm doing is I'm just looking ISA straight north from there. Um, I've got the layers set as Google Maps and then it will show up the same as on this map um, just to make it easier to match up. I do change between layers and we'll look into that later date. Um, and as you can see, it matches up uh, and it's just this point here on the mountain and on the road here. Um, so I will basically just add another POI um, and I'm going to put there's a nice little logo I use um, for control control yeah and I'll put CP2 in there and I'll save that and now if we zoom out 
we begin to see a little bit of um, a pattern, you know, start the first checkpoint, second checkpoint, and then the other um, uh, parkour sections. I'll also add a um, control at the ferry, so you can see the ferry goes across here, and this is the one that was mandated in the, um, the race manual. So let me just put a little note there. I mean, you don't necessarily have to do this, but this is, it's just the way I do it and it makes it nice and clear and easy. Um, and when you do refer to it on, on your phone, um, you, you can just see things nice and easily with these logos and put extra info. So I think I actually put the ferry times in here. Um, I think it was some, this isn't hundred percent accurate. I think it was like 4 a.m., 9 a.m., 2 p.m. and um, which one did we get? We got 9 p.m. I think. So there was four or five ferries a day, uh, one at 12 as well. Um, so yeah, basically I put that in um, and you can put a link to the ferry company and stuff. So when I'm on my phone, I can refer to it because it's all well and good knowing it now when you're planning. But when you're riding along, you do want to, you do, you know, you do, you have to like jog your memory um, you know, and find, find things out on the fly. So that's built that. Um, and now I'm just going to add a little bit of extra detail around the the parkour. So for the same reasons that I'd put the um, like the ferry in, I like to just put the start and the finish of the parkour sectors in using um, POIs. Um, and I'll do that now before I plan the route um, just to make it a little bit clearer. So I'll add a little... Uh, POI in here so I tend to use the um, there's a nice one that works segment start um, so I'll put this as I'll put it as CP1 start um, save that and then I'll put another one at the end uh, and then that way again when I'm referring I mean you're just riding along you're not necessarily going to see all the um, there's not going to be a big signpost saying that you've just started sector the sector so it's good to have this um you know to refer to and also some gps units will actually give you that kind of um that info as a heads up uh so cp1 um where are we segment end cp1 end um, and then i'll just do the same um for the next two so i'll pause the video and come back in a sec once i've done that Right, now I've added those extra sections in. So as you can see, um, starts and finished for the four sections. The checkpoint here, the overall start there, and the, the ferry where we're gonna end this particular video um, at the, the, the top here. So now the next stage is to basically build the route. So as you can see on the left-hand side, um, we're actually, there's different layers. So if I click on the different layers, you'll get the different files on the base layer. Obviously we wanna make an overall route. Um, so I'm just going to start with this Japan sector one. That is the, the first sector. Um, you can see the route essentially starts starts at the first start of the sector, but the actual our overall route is going to start here. So what I'm going to do is I'm first just going to drag that um, to the the overall start, uh, and that, the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to zoom in and just put a control point here. Um, oops clicked on the POI, zoom in a bit more. So I'm gonna add a control point in just there. Um, and that's gonna allow me to move the start of it. Um, let's try pin it there. So now I can kind of essentially drag this to the start of where I wanna start. So see the little green man, uh, the little green thing, that is where the overall route starts. Um, let me just move this back to where it was, just to avoid confusion. Um, so yeah, zoom out, and I'm gonna drag that to the start here, where I put my POI. So as you can see, it adds in and rolls straight into the um, parkour one. Um, and currently the route ends at the end of parkour one. Um, however, we need to link everything together. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna disregard CP2 for this for the second for this second. Um, as you can see, there's a little green dot at the start of the CP3 sector, um, and if I hover over it, it automatically links it together. 
So I'm going to click on the green dot and that has then kind of merged those two files on the left hand side here if you see. Um, so now I've got a continual route. Um, so the start, CP1, CP2 and then I'm going to do the same for CP4 or sector 4 and just keep an eye on the left hand side over here as I click it they merge together. So now I've, only, I've just got one root file. It's basically got those preset sectors and um, it's linked in the, the mandated ones that the, the organizer sent out beforehand. I'm also going to move the um, the end of it to, well, I'm going to link it to the ferry up here. So root to POI, click on it, click root to POI. And that has basically linked all of those together. Um, I can, I could have also done that on CP2. Um, but there is another way to do that. Let me just get this out of the way. Um, so now I need to just make sure CP2 is in there. So I'm just going to drag it and pull the route across like that. Um, nice and easy. Uh, so as you can see, I'll just zoom in, double check it's hit it on this mountain road. This little node here, that is that is the um, the point. Uh, and I'm going to go straight through that checkpoint now. So as you can see, it's that is that. that I mean, it's that easy, really. Essentially, that is a route you can use 300 miles from the start to the ferry. Um, however, there are a few little things I do like to do. Um, so firstly, this is just a little thing to make things clearer. Um, what you can do is you can, um, I like to highlight the sector in a different color. Again, so when I look at the phone app or when I'm just referring to it, I can see the sectors in a different color so I know exactly when I'm on them. So what you can do is um, see the blue line. I'm, I'm basically, I'm rolling along this this little, um, the elevation chart at the bottom. Um, so I'm gonna wait till the blue dots at the start. I'm gonna click and hold and then I'm just gonna drag it across to the end sector. And as you can see, it gets, um, gets highlighted and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to selection tools down the bottom right hand side here and I'm just going to make that a different color I'm going to make it blue so it stands out so now as you can see if I zoom in just to refer to this map I can see exactly where the sectors are so if I'm riding along and I want to refer to it on the map or on my phone if, if my little dots um, locations on the blue section I know I'm on the sector um, import it's important on a route like this where there's set park or sections because you know with a free route route you can actually just you know change your mind and uh, you know go a different way if you need to or if you miss a turn you can loop back around but if you're on this the actual sector uh, you can't you can't do that so you need to uh, you know it's good to have that kind of knowledge um, so again I'm just going to pause that and I'm going to do the same thing for the third and the fourth sector so there we have it if we look at the map I've now highlighted each sector um, in blue just for clarity um, now essentially you could just save that here and now um, and upload it to your GPS device you know whichever one you use I use a Wahoo element um, so there's a companion app, app and it, it syncs together with Ryber GPS automatically um, that's probably a, a different video um, so yeah that that is the route um, but what what I will do is because this is a new um, it's a new country for me. Um, I'm just going to check and see, um, you know, if there's any kind of a big roads or b if there's any, you know, things I I should be looking out for. Um, so the first thing I'm going to go for the terrain, just to see. It's quite mountainous, and sometimes it's easier just to go a flatter route that's slightly longer rather than direct. Um, I mean, it doesn't look like there's many variations you could do here potentially you could go to UC and go across um, maybe I'll just drag it there and see what that looks like a um, bit longer and you see you save a bit of elevation so I think I'll do that stay on the um, you know the faster road um, you're forced through here um, and again there's not really many options to this checkpoint here um, so yeah it looks fairly self-explanatory um, you know in that way and actually on the event itself a lot of us ended up on the same route what i will do is i'll put the global heat map on um, and as you can see this basically this shows you where people have uploaded routes so it might show a an obvious kind of route that that i've missed um for example here i mean this looks like it's had a lot of traffic maybe we'll try going that way oh, it makes it a little bit shorter as well um so yeah it's, it's nice and flat um so yeah, things like that you can do just to kind of 
fine tune your route. I mean, for this event, uh, it's not necessarily a, a race, um, but for something like the transcontinental race, um, you do want to really optimize it. And I'd go through the whole thing with like a fine tooth comb just to try and like find the quickest, most efficient route. Um, I didn't do, do it in this particular instance. Um, because, you know, to be honest, I was quite happy to go the, 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 the shorter, more mountainous way and see the country. Um, but yeah, there's loads of things you can do and you see all the different kind of um, layers here. So you can look at the satellite and add things in there um, just to see what the train is like. The only other thing I did do just to help me out, um, I looked at a few towns and I just put like markers where, where there was hotels. Um, or shops so for example here there's a grocery store so drop POI and what I did was um, let's use this as an example here this this city um, so I just check and see you know there's there's food joyful you know that was um that's like a diner type thing so maybe I just put a little POI in there uh, just put food um, and then you know um, what's there and I could also put um, I could also just um, put like shops and stuff on there um, and also there was there was um, you know there's a bike shop here so maybe I'll just put a POI on there um, again just for quick reference so I'll just do that and then it shows up nice and easy um, is there a bike shop yeah look there's a bike shop thing um, so you don't you never you, like you never know what might happen you might need some spares and stuff um, and there was also there was 100% there was hotels and stuff here so the other thing I did was put um, accommodation uh, lodging um, and sometimes I go into detail uh, other times I just put the fact that there were hotels in that town and that that was like another little detail so you can see then when you zoom in, you've got the start and the finish of the parkour. The parkour sector is highlighted and then little little notes here and there um, should you need them so you can refer to them on the app. Um, and then once you've done that, um, I guess you need to save it. And um, basically, I hit save down the bottom. <laughs> That's to make sure you've got it all. Um, override Japan Sector 1, yes, save that. And... Um, and then you've basically got something to ride with. The only other thing I would do is this is a 300 mile route. Um, you know, when you look at it as one file, so you might just want to to split that down. Um, so I shall quickly just show you before I go how to split one big file into a couple of smaller files just to make it easier on your on your GPS. So the route's saved now. Uh, you can see saved Japan sector one. Um, you can name that as you wish. And, um, you know, everyone has their little kind of way of, uh, of kind of like organizing it. So I tend to have, I, I, I was basically cut files down into kind of 100, 150 mile sections and then name them one, two, three, just so that once they're on my, my, um, my Wahoo and I select a route, I can just see them all um, in numerical order. So it's nice and simple, um, but everyone has their own system. So the last thing I'm going to show you, as I mentioned, this is a 300 mile route and it's going to be a bit chunky for the old GPS. So I want to try and cut it in half. Um, so this is, I mean, the, the, these are all these route tools. These are all on the, you know, the paid version of Rive GPS. Um, so you won't find them on the free version, uh, but you go to split route here. Um, and then it says click anywhere on the route or elevation profile to split the route at that point. So. Um, 300 miles, 150 miles, or let's do it on the top of this mountain here. That seems like a logical place to do it. So click that. And as you can see on the left-hand side, you now have two files. And so the first one is the first half of it. So what I'm gonna do is, as I mentioned, I'm just gonna uh, set the name for it. Um, I'll just do it nice and simple, Japan one. Or well, sometimes I do it one Japan, and then it's kind of, um, it kind of goes in, numerical order uh, on the on the, the menu on your GPS um, and then the second part as you can see click on that highlights the second part um, have I done that back to front oh I've done it back to front so that would be that be two save okay and this will be the original and that will be one Japan um, do that so one save save route and it's gonna have a think about it um, because it's it's quite a, a chunky file 
So that's that's now saved. Um, we can view the route, but we need to save number two as well. So again, hit save, uh, Japan two, save as a new route, that's important. Otherwise you'll just copy over what you've done. So get that saved. So there we have it, that is also saved and we can view the route. And you can see that they, they are now two separate routes. So that's the second half. Um, and if we go into the routes, uh, you will see Japan one as well. And now you can basically, um, if, if you've got it synced into Wahoo or um, like I think it's Garmin Connect, whatever you use to, to use your, to navigate on your bike, those should sync in. The only other thing I do to make sure they come to the top of the list, I hit pin. So I pin that at the top. Um, let's go to my Japan 2 route as well, which is here. Um, I'll pin that. Uh, and then basically what that, that does is, um, if you upload a load of other stuff, uh, you go to pinned and you can see they will be in here somewhere. Um, I've got a lot of stuff pinned, here we go. Japan and Japan 1, Japan 2, sorry. Um, and yeah, and that will give you um, your roots. So I hope that's been useful. Um, it's quite an in-depth video. I'm sure um, you've not watched this far unless you're really into this stuff and you really want to learn. So if you've got any questions, put them down below. Uh, I'll try and answer them or maybe um, there'll be opportunity to do another video to answer some kind of more queries. Um, I'll put the links to those little files I've created um, in the description below. And yeah, go and check out Rob GPS. And yeah, hopefully you like this. Hopefully it's useful. Uh, don't forget to give us a give us a subscribe and um, yeah, watch the other videos on the Japanese Odyssey. And yeah, see you all soon. Thanks for watching.